So, uh, Deponita, this this is your second uh, um, uh, company that you're the CEO of. The first was 42 Strategies, as you had mentioned. Um, what would you say, looking back to the you know three and a half years you spent doing that and now just over four years as a CEO, what are some of the lessons you have learned as a leader and what are some of the mistakes that you have made along the way? Oh, so many, yeah. <laughs> uh, both. Right. So, yeah, um, we all do. So last week, it's funny you asked me, but, but last week I was talking to one of my investors. I had, I had to take a, a tough decision and I was feeling a little blue. Um, and I called him and, and he had been an entrepreneur before and grown and then IPO his company. And I right. often look yep. at him as someone to talk to it, you know, do yeah. that little bit of the founder CEO mm-hmm. thing. And he reminded me of the Theodore Roosevelt quote about the, it's not the critic that counts, but the man in the arena. Um, and I think that by and large over the last seven years, seven and a half years of being the CEO of an organization, that's really what I've really majorly learned to appreciate is that absolutely everyone is going to have something to say about you, about what you've done, about what you're saying, about what you didn't yeah. do. All of them know how to do it better, but yeah. none of them will actually do it. So mm-hmm. learning to, to take that criticism and mm-hmm. filter it down, take what is useful and keep growing and throw everything out, that yeah. one's probably a big one. Yep. Thing, number two is a visceral appreciation is that as the CEO, it's always your fault. But that when stops there, but when you do something good, that's your team. Yeah. And, and that's humbling and it can, and I'm sure at times feels like unfair even, mm-hmm. but it is a great feeling when you can point to your team, when you all have yes. won something and say, look at this great group of people. So that's mm-hmm. number two. Mm-hmm. I would say number three is, you know, the empathy part is really interesting. So you want to encourage your team to be themselves and, and, and sort of bring their quote unquote mm-hmm. whole selves to work. But you also want to moderate it in a way that that bringing whole self does not in any way compromise a space, creativity, professionalism. And that balance is a really delicate one. And I've certainly made all sorts of interesting mistakes in that balance over the last three years as you're doing this mm-hmm. sort of remotely. Um, I think the next is I've really started to disambiguate between builders and professionals, or I don't want to use the word execs because that always indicates sort of top level, but Mm -hmm. builders are a very unique breed. You know, not everybody can go from zero to 50. There are so many more people than can take something that's at 50 and take it a hundred, but zero to 50. Oh my God. That's probably where I've made the most mistakes is, is, is knowing who is the right person for zero to 50, who can right, define right. a de novo, who can handle a blank page, mm-hmm. who can, you know, who has that high throughput. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. really definitely uh, learned a lot um, over there. And then last, and this maybe speaks a little more to some of my other personal identifiers, you know, woman, color, young, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. You if you hire somebody and they think that they know better than you, that's probably a relationship that's already ended. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, it, it's, it's interesting, but there is this tendency again to say, well, you know, you've hired me. Let me tell you how to do your job. And there's this little bit of patronizing slap on the back thing that I've certainly experienced. Um, and, and earlier on, I would probably take it as a, I should do something about it. And now I'm like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Welcome to my world. And you've chosen to take direction from me and you must. So Mm -hmm. there are, those are sort of like the mixed bag of lessons I've been pondering on in addition to a whole lot of other things. I have an incredible coach, so I've learned a ton from her as well, but these are some of the things that stand out to me. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you know, I don't want to spend too much time focusing on uh, female founder and CEO, um, specifically female CEO, but um, I think it's important to mention that there are still not many women CEOs. Um, And you talked about, uh, in what you just explained, empathy. And I'm wondering if 
in your experience, if you, if you feel like as a woman, you can be more empathetic? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I have certainly met very empathetic men and very unempathetic women. So yeah. that's, that, that's what it is. But, um, I would say that I'm a fairly empathetic person, sometimes even too much, (laughs) but um, I do know that history teaches us that women often make better leaders through uh, these sorts of uncertain times. I would agree. Um, And that's, there's just hard data on that Mm -hmm. for, for many, Mm -hmm. many hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Um, And I index on that heavily. I think Mm -hmm. number two, uh, the way women are often brought up in often brought up, uh, they're able to take care of people. And I always remember the the microfinance story, right? Why are the microfinance loans given to women? Um, And it's a little bit of that is that we are some, we have a propensity to in, you know, to increase the size of the table, to bring everyone into the fold, to make sure that we're reinvesting in, Mm -hmm. in their growth. I also think the women are much more used to saying, sorry, and, you know, in ad- in a workplace where CEOs very rarely say, I screwed up and it's mm-hmm. my fault, that's really refreshing. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, it's not as well received everywhere, but I think it's important for the exec to say, I'm sorry, or I screwed up, or that was a bad decision mm-hmm. and we're going to do something about it. And I think women are just generally a little more able to say, um, sorry, they may be even a little more <laughs> trained uh, to do so. Um I think last but certainly not the least, in our market, our market is staffed with women leaders. And it's one of the great joys of working in medical affairs is incredible Mm -hmm. women just at all the levels of the customers we work at from the highest to, you know, our our basic user. Um, So I seem to have found myself at least working with a lot of women in in who we serve um, and seeing some of their amazing leadership come into play. Mm -hmm. So you have about 60 employees now. Mm-hmm. Um, how many on the executive team, including yourself? I would count about, well, exec is sort of the usual CEO, CFO, chief mm-hmm, commercial, mm-hmm. and me. So that's four. But then we have a leadership team. There's a CTO and so forth. So I'd say plus minus about eight in total okay. that I would count as senior leadership of the company. What's the, of those eight people, what's the sort of diversity makeup of those? So there's a lot of racial diversity and actually okay. age as well. Um, and in gender, it's, it's currently three, including me, of the, of the eight. Mm-hmm. Um, and incredible, just, yeah, just the best people. Like I am, mm-hmm. I'm very, very thrilled at, at this particular combination mm-hmm. of people. Mm-hmm. How did you build that executive team of seven other people aside from yourself? Painfully. Um, well, the CTO, I met at dinner at a friend's. So that was <laughs> the usual story. The chief commercial officer and one of our other co-founders, I hired after he had been like sort of hanging out at the company a bunch, kind of hired him when he was done with his last company, which had grown mm-hmm. up. The others, one of the others I've known for a while in the DC circuit and wanted to work with him for many years, ever since I sort of met him. And then the opportunity presented itself. Mm-hmm. The others were just hired through a recruiting process. Good. Um, but I would say that overall, the hiring, hiring the right leadership team through this time, oof, really hard. <laughs> Carol Schultz here. Thanks for watching this excerpt from Authentically Successful. The conversation doesn't end there. So if you want to hear this episode in full and all my conversations with many other successful founders and CEOs, please visit verticalelevation.com slash podcast.